Hello and welcome to the midweek episode of Talking Baseball. We're talking slumps and how do you get out of them and Mariners every day. Let's do it. No case. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball midweek episode. It is June 8th. As you're listening to this, Trevor looks beautiful. He's in the middle, coming to you from California. Jake looks good as well. Uh, on my left, your right, and BBD, bottom right corner, stage right. It's Talking Baseball, episode 498. Wow, 500 episodes is coming Uh-oh. up soon? Holy Next smokes. Monday. Is everyone going to be here for it? You guys going to bring the noise? Who's got the IL on Monday? Me, I think. Yeah, is, I'll just do. be. I'll just get real high for it. Five hundredth episode. Uh, I thought it was different for the five hundredth episode. Ew. Jake's finger in a frog. How are you, Jake? James. Before you Trevor. said. Before you get into it. Yeah. Uh, this show is brought to you by Seeky Code yeah. Talkin T A L K I N. If you want to get tickets to any game, I was just telling Trev that our biggest region, biggest yeah. region of the company. Is the Southwest, California. People might think New York. Wrong. We're a Dodgers company and an Angels company. Angels. And a Padres company. Snakes. And the Snakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is the Rockies Southwest or are they Midwest? Midwest. Depends on how you cut up the map. Some people cut up differently. All right, let me get back into it. SeatGeek's cutting up prices for you. They're cutting up prices. They let you know what the best price is uh, and the best seat, and they got green and red. Green means good. Red means bad. Red's an awful color. Code TALKIN, $20 off your first SeatGeek order. uh, All right, All right, right, Jake, how are you? I'm good. James, Trevor, BBD, everyone listening live. Uh, I hate to start on a serious note, but want to send... Uh, our thoughts to Joe's McFly uh, as he's recovering from Tommy John surgery. Get well, Joe. We love you. Um, this will get better. This will get better. I heard he wasn't even hurt. He just wanted to get it. Just get the sympathy. Um, uh, I'm excited to yuck with the boys. Trev, I mean, now that you've thrown the batting glove on, you just look. <laughs> you look like you cause problems at local parks. If you saw this coming into the box, oh, you knew that you at least have some show time. Yeah, hits hits the ball pretty far, and that's basically sums up my entire big league career right there. Trevor Plouffe has juice. Trev, batting gloves and your topic are two great things that go side by side because Kyle Tucker just broke yes. his slump by wearing batting gloves. Also, James. He wore two different colors in that game. Yeah. You know, you got to be funky. Jo- Joe's is calling Jake. I think he's... I'm going to pick up quick. We'll see. This might get cut out. Might right get now. cut out of the episode. We'll see. Great call with Joe's McFly is now at the end of this episode. Uh, if you've been tuned into the Tommy John drama, um, we got some updates on that front. I'm still a little confused, yeah. but um, let's talk some baseball. Talking slumps. Yeah. Trev. The first time you met me, you said I looked like a good little slump buster for you. What, hmm. what was that about? That never came out of my mouth. But okay. now that you say it, there's some truth to it. Okay. I don't think I would consider you a slump buster, but some people would consider you a slump buster. Yes. Thank you. I, I, I liked him a little bit rounder. Okay. That's, we have, we hold, on. <laughs> hold on. Time out. What was, Trevor, what's the worst... Hold on, hold on. Let's start over. That's horrible. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll leave that. We'll leave that. Trev, what's the what's the worst slump of your career? Like, if I if I say that, do you jump to a certain place in time? Not really. I don't. Okay. I had obviously I had slumps uh, in my career, none that like stood out. Like, oh my gosh, like the world is ending. Although I felt that way after, you know, a series makes you feel that way as a hitter. And that's kind of like what got me thinking about this. We've had some really good, you know, quotes on slumps. Uh, We can start out by reading Joey Votto's tweet, which I thought just really encapsulated what it feels like. This is pretty good. So the experience of being in a batting slump is that it, it feels like a labyrinth. One feels trapped, alone, and disoriented. When you finally get out, 
You are relieved and can't believe how easy it was to find the exit. Unfortunately, that exit eventually leads to another labyrinth. And it's true. It's you go to bed one day feeling like you're a major league baseball player. You wake up the next day, get to the park, maybe you have a good BP. And then the game comes around and you have no idea what you're doing. Ball looks different. It looks smaller. It looks blurrier. Um, sometimes you don't even see it at all. And you don't know what happens and you do so many things to try and, and get out of it. And like Joey says, one day it could be a broken bat single. It could be a walk. It could be a jam shot to the second baseman. Something clicks. You start to get your timing again. You see the ball and things go back to normal, but inevitably you're going to find yourself feeling like that again. And my topic kind of took a little turn. I was going to go over, you know, we've had some big slumps for some marquee players for us this, this season. Mike Trout is in one right now. Um, we're recording this on Tuesday. He broke out of a one for 28 or an O for 28 effort with a single. Um, but it's one of the worst slumps of his career. And we talk about all the time. Baseball is just hard. Even the best players, even Mike Trout goes through that. Um, Andrew McCutcheon was 0 for 32. He was 0 for 4 in the game. He gets a hit in his last at bat, walks it off to break his slump. It's I, I text with Kutch about it. I say, you know you're about to go off right now. He goes, you know, that's how it works, dude. You go through these slumps, you come right out, and you start to bang again because you start to find this confidence. So I went and uh, Googled, what are some slumps for, you know, some good hitters? Because I don't want to hear about the bad hitters. No one wants to hear about my slumps. They were – it happened a lot. And I guess I want to – before I get into these, there's a funny story about that. And I was just telling Cole Tucker this the other day. You know, he's had his ups and downs this year. He's with Arizona now. That's nice. And I was telling him all these things. And he goes, yeah, that's good advice. I said, yeah, Paul Molitor told me, you know, similar things. And I told him, like, dude, I, I cried in front of Paul Molitor before in the minor leagues. Like, I was in a slump so bad. So I guess that could point to that, a minor league slump, if you wanted to, Jake. I was, I was in such a bad slump. Uh, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was in tears to this guy and, and he is such a good person. He helped me out of it. And I was like, dude, what do I, what do I do to get out of the slump? And he point blank said, Trev, I didn't get into a lot of slumps. I'm probably the, the wrong person to ask. About this. <laughs> Whoops. And then he went on to say, you know, have confidence in yourself, all the things you're supposed to say, but I, you know, I, that's kind of how it goes with slumps. You got to find your own way out. There's no secret potion. So we can go to some of these. This is an article written in 2021, David Adler, Sarah Langs, Andrew Simon at MLB.com. I love the title of it. I told you guys this mm. before. It's 18 slumps that can comfort Lindor. And Lindor was going through a slump at the time. And I just love the idea of Francisco Lindor opening this article and finding solace and looking at other people's misery. Like sitting in his hotel room on the road being like, oh, I finally found mm. comfort because I'm looking at all these other people who sucked too. But sometimes, what do they say, Jake? Misery loves companies. Maybe oh, they're right. Every day. Bryce Harper, uh, when he was with the Nationals, May 31st to June 23rd, 2018. Through 83 plate appearances, he had 143 with one home run. Uh, it was a horrible stretch. He found, but he got out of it. He found his footing. He finished with 34 home runs. He led the league in walks, 130 walks, 889 OPS. And this was the year before he signed uh, his record-breaking $330 million deal with the Phillies. So Bryce Harper goes through it, finds a way to get out of it, signs the massive deal. Another recent example, Paul Goldschmidt. This is when he was with the D-backs, April 27th to May 22nd, 2018. Through 98 plate appearances, he had 116. Uh, he finds his stroke. He finished the year 290, 389, 533 with 33 home runs. He got traded. That offseason to the Cardinals then signed his five-year $125 million deal. Trout's done it before, too. I guess the point is everybody goes through this stuff. It is scary, but you end up finding your way. Now, these guys are like the elite of the, the, of the elite, and this is where my topic kind of took a pivot. I talk about here a lot about how pitchers have the edge with technology. And so my mind started to wonder, you know, we can talk about it all we want, but how do we, as hitters, you know, how do we get ahead? How, what, what can we do to, you know, try to compensate for what these pitchers are doing? Cause if you think about what pitchers can do, I mean, everything is so tangible. Like if you bring your arm angle up here or you twist your finger on the baseball to here, um, you lift these specific weights, you do this arm care program, like you're going to get better and like, and quickly. And that's just 
that's just how it is with hitters. If you ever went into like one of like the hitting gurus setups, it's like a loony bin, bro. <laughs> we got playground balls under your elbow. You got chains on your feet. You're on a wobbly board. You're on a, a PVC pipe between your arms. You're doing all of this ridiculous stuff, trying to get a feel, you know, a direction. Okay. And yes, you can put on like a K vest and, and map your biomechanics, but more than more often than not, you're doing some like kind of silly drill and like what used to be silly drills are more accepted now. But like, if you really take a step back, like there's silly drills, all sorts of different heavy bats, light bats, long bats, <clears throat> short bats, fungo hitting all sorts of crazy stuff. So what can we do to like bring the tech in? So I started texting my buddy, Jay Gibbons. Now, Jay, former big leaguer. Really? Pop. Yeah. I didn't know you and Jay Gibbons were boys. So Jay is an understudy of like Craig Wallenbrock. He was in there with Rob Van Skoyik. You know, like he was, he learned from all those guys. He teaches from the same book as all those guys. I went through Van Skoyik. He becomes hitting coach of the Dodgers. Me and Jay link, uh, linked up and we did some stuff together. Um, so I started texting. I'm like, I'm like, how can we... What can we do? And my question to him was, with the biomechanics, a guy like Taylor Ward, right? Like seemingly kind of out of nowhere, right? But he like found something that worked for him. I said, do we, do we ever take guys in the middle of a hot streak like this where they feel amazing, they can't miss the ball, and do we hook them up to these machines? And he said, no, not really. And that to me was surprising because whenever you – see someone going off what's one of the things people say i wish i could bottle it up i wish i could bottle that feeling up but you can't but this is like the closest thing and basically i'm out here making a cry out to people like let's as uh, as hitters let's unite and figure some stuff out i think this is a place to start i'm sure people are already doing it but let's like let's raise the awareness on this a little bit let's get these guys I know people really love when I talk about myself, so I'll just do it right now, yep. okay? 2012, I go on this incredible hot streak. I, I wish I could have bottled that feeling up. I wish I could have got hooked up to these machines because like Taylor Ward, I got banged up. Luke Hochefer busted my thumb up, had nerve damage in my thumb. I missed like six weeks. I hate that guy. So I come back trying to have that same feeling. I don't have it. It's gone. Now, maybe if I was hooked up and I had um, you know, all my um, movements, like put into data points and I had my cadence tracked. I asked him, can you do that with the K vest? He said, I think you can. I think you can measure like your hips. And when your hands kick in that way, you can measure your cadence, your movements there. that you can start to really feel like how you were feeling when you were good. And essentially you can bottle it up. So I'm pleading that we start to do this more. And if we are doing it, I want to hear more. Like if there are people in the comments want to say, this is already happening. Please tell me about it because I need to raise the awareness. Pitchers are getting away with far, far too much, dude. Far, far too much. And all we've had uh, as of late is some VR stuff. I think that is another logical step. We've seen CC and his son having like a national commercial for that. Mm. I think this is a better way to help people. When you're feeling good, let's track your data points and try to bottle it up the best we can. Well, this is a little bit of what you're saying because I just reported this, reported this. I talked about this on Talking Yanks. Uh, this is pitchers, Trev, but it's what you're saying. The Yankees, for the first time, from what I heard, at the end of the season when pitchers had, were feeling right and they found themselves, before they went away for the offseason, they invited every pitcher, if they wanted, to go down to Tampa to the complex and throw a bullpen in front of the, um, what's it called, the tracking and the, I'm blanking on the word again. I blanked on last time. Soda. The rap Soto. So when they come back from spring training, they can find that same arm slot immediately. They can find the pressure point and the finger grip uh, all immediately. And like, oh, no, 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 no. When la at the end of the year, like your fastball was here and now you're here and get back to normal. And that's what you're saying you want them to do for hitters. Yeah. Pitchers, when you direct pitchers, it's like literally you're directing them. It's, it's right there. You tell them what to do. You have that all tracked. We don't do that as hitters. And then, you know, part you have, of it is because hitters you know, have to react. We have to react. Pitch. We have to control the variables. 
or we don't have control of variables. Yes, that's that's the biggest point. This is just a starting point. You know, you're not going to be able to bottle it up. I, I talked to Jay about that. So obviously these readings are just a, a starting point, but at least, you know, it, maybe it'll help you sustain that hot streak too. Say you are in this streak, Taylor Ward's doing it. Say he's not hurt. He's still going through it, but he, maybe he's feeling a little bit off one day. Hey, let's go back to these readings. Let's try to mirror this in real time. See if, if we're a little early, if we're a little late uh, with our separation, whatever it may be. So I just, we got to do something, man. The balls really hurt us at the beginning of the year. The dead balls really hurt. Um, Jay was talking, he worked with Matt Chapman in the off season a little bit. And he's like, dude, there was like 10 balls that probably were home runs last year at the beginning of the year that, you know, we didn't get any credit for. So I think the balls have changed. Is that, that's like a thing now we're seeing the home runs at a, a much uh, higher clip, but yeah, we got to do something, too. man. What, what kind of uh, superstitions have you seen around the league for getting out of slumps? Like as a team, talk about team reactions first. You bat a guy, lead off maybe. Say, go get as many at-bats as you can. I think they, the Yankees did that with Jeter at one point. Uh, first pitch, Zito, homer, broke the slump. Curtain call for it. I was at the game. Or you wear a gold thong. Jason Giambi, he would put the thong, uh, pass it to a teammate. Jake Storielli. Like, really. You need this. It's going rough. You know? Everyone's got different stuff. Uh, we've had, you know, naked BP, uh, which is something mm. that I knew a couple guys have done. Mm. Go um, on. Seances with the bats. Um, I used to bring my bats to chapel, pray for them, whatever you could do. Uh, Justin Morneau was probably the most superstitious guy I played with. He would, he didn't, he would eat mac and cheeses like back in the day before he was like Mr. Health and juice guy, he would have instant mac and cheese before a game. That was like his thing. And like, it was comfort food for him for before a game. He felt good. I think he had the microwave it for two minutes or something like that, but he would never put two minutes in. He would only put three, three, three in, and then he would make sure he stopped it at two minutes. So there's just, there's stuff like that, but there's really nothing you can do to get out of a fucking slump. The only thing that I think you can do is bunt. Mm. Or, or there are times where I've heard guys say that I'm going to go up there. I'm giving away this at bat because I'm probably going to go give it away anyway. And they'll just let the ball get as deep as possible and try to like see it deep and, and then still put the barrel on it. So guys will try it. Basically, what I'm trying to say is guys will try anything, and I wish it didn't have to be that way. I wish we had something that could get you back to your, to your baseline. And bottling up a hot streak with the data points, it's not the whole equation because obviously you have to react to pitchers. Everything's different. But, man, it's a start because we're getting steamrolled by the tech right now. And, like, I know I, I talk about it all the time, but I'm trying to come up with some solutions. I like it. It, it makes sense. We know – we know a lot of teams have their mental coaches talk to players about everything, but uh, one of the things they do is they make taster reels. Uh, and, you know, we, we used to talk about tasting yourself a oh lot. My. And this is, I mean, Trev, that's basically the next step is, is instead of watching a taster reel of you hitting homers or driving a ball the other way, it's getting the actual measurements on it. So when you are in a slump, you go to the cage and you're right. You know, you're, you're opening up your hip uh, a split second too soon or whatever it is. And that, that could be a really good, good way to do it. And slumps, man, are wild. It's, it's for anyone that has ever played the sport of baseball or softball, you've been in one, <laughs> um, yep. uh, you know, uh, Barry Bonds to Trout to wh whoever it may be to yourself listening to this in Little League. You, you probably remember a slump. I know one of one of the first Jimmy Jake stories uh, when we were playing freshman baseball, I was in a slump and I told him if I don't get a hit, I'm running poles till I throw up. I think I put up a little one for tree that day with a dribbler through the infield. But <laughs> you do anything to get out of it because it feels anything. ridiculous. And you everyone at home, you watch your teams and when a guy's in a slump, it's paralyzing. You, you know, know who's not in a slump right now? Ah, Eugenio Suarez crushing the ball. That's right. That's right. Go Mariners. It just feels like whenever a guy's in a slump, it's unreal. And you see hitters trying stuff at the plate. You'll see them go. You can see a hitter mentally go, all right, this first pitch, I'm just going to unload. I'm going to get off my A swing, and I run into one. And that's the pitch they get a slider in the dirt. And that at-bat's basically gone. 
and they're behind, and it just feels like you're caving on yourself. That, uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know what what you can do, but you're right. You might as well check in with the technology. And I was thinking about it from a hitter, if that would like freak me out a little bit. But no, it's kind of like, yeah, I hell yeah, I'm hot right now. You better measure this shit. You know, like you know when you're going well. You show up to the park, you're feeling like a G. Like it, everything just works. You don't have to think about anything. Uh, if you were able to go there and measure it, like okay, so I was I was talking to him. I'll get a little mo- bit more in depth of our conversation here. I said, "Is anybody doing this?" He said, "The Dodgers do it somewhat, but from my knowledge, they'll do it in spring training and say, okay, let's get some, let's just get your movements on, you know." with the data points. I don't know how to say this. How do you say that? You get your movements and you categorize it. You, what do you, sure. whatever. Measure. I'm an Label. idiot. Yeah. Collected. So they do that and they, you know, in the off season, they'll do it and whatever, but doing it during the season, I don't know if people have done that yet. And I'm really hoping that maybe we start trying that. I like know who's why. Like super hot right now. I know. Besides why, Eugenio Suarez. I know why this would be a tough task for you, Trev. And I think that you, you should, Get it going. J.P. Crawford with a good start to the year. You were saying that before. Yeah, no, he's been good. Yeah. Uh, because okay. you asked the guy. should have bottled it. Yeah. Uh, Tramel's been hitting well. Yeah. Um, when he plays. Um, guys are superstitious, Trev. Uh, they use superstition to get out of slumps, but they also use it more to stay in a, to stay in a heater. Because if, if, if Jeter was even asked, like, hey, Jeter, you uh, five games in a row now with a hit. Like, you're feeling good? His response would be, come on now. Like, don't, don't talk about yeah. that. Like, he would always push back whenever someone said, like, a uh, hot streak or you feel, like, you know. You because they don't, because they're so superstitious about it. So the moment they track it, then they go one for four the next day with a single. They're going to be like, oh, my God, we're near the end. I knew I shouldn't have tracked it. Hitting so dumb that James, if you're a, if you're on a heater, and you or like a big long hit streak, mm-hmm. something like that, and you go one for four, you get the hit in the first at bat, and then the next three at bats you strike out. That might affect you the next day, but if you struck out your first three at bats and you got to hit that last at bat, you're rolling into the next day feeling solid. That's how that's how crazy you know hitting is mental. So maybe you maybe we can never do it, and maybe we're just doom this is like uh isn't terminator about that like we gave we gave them too much power like maybe pitchers are just going to rule this forever and i'm going to be stuck in misery i don't know but i'm going to go out fighting bro i really am what about what about uh this when a guy's on a heater and then he faces a tough pitcher because now they have the analytics like oh his his ball is more an x-axis uh, movement and your bat doesn't hits Y axis movement better. So we're going to sit you down to not break it up, uh, to not like hey, give you a bad night. But then a lot of times she's like, well, does that ruin him? Cause now he's sitting when he could be hitting, but teams are doing that now, like in the middle of a hot stretch, they're just like, Hey, you know what? Rather you not face Chris sale while he's throwing as, as good as he is. And let's just sit you and skip the start. I never got that treatment, and I wish I got that. <laughs> I okay. saw like uh, my good buddy Malibu Mike, Mike Mustakis, would get that treatment. Like he would get hard, like he would get tough lefties off. And you know, I'm sure it hurt him. Like he wanted to play, but I think the Royals knew. Like, yeah, let's keep let's keep you feeling good. Like we know about like the mental part of the game, and if you're feeling good and like there there are data points to say like you're probably not gonna do well against this guy whether it's a track record or whether you're talking new age stuff like the what access you're able to get to i'm all for that and i don't think people especially with 162 game season i don't think people are are too mad about that because you can also know that you're going to be available off the bench if that guy gets out of the game let's go let's do it all right i like that jake you had a topic leeching onto this topic is that what you said? You said I'm a leech you? I did say that. Uh, who's leading the AL in steals right now? Do you Probably know? a Mariner if I would, was to guess. Center fielder. Mm-hmm. Julio. Julio. Also yeah. on a heater. He's like hitting yeah. 320 in his last like 10 games or something like that. He's really good. He, ca- he caused a brawl and an ejection. 
Are you guys Roman ready? Well, wait, this? wasn't that that was that wasn't Julio? That was France. well, he he hit a homer after the brawl. Oh yeah, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. they threw it over Suarez's head. Was that the Astros hitting coach? I haven't looked at it yet, but but someone Ty Francis quotes don't add up. I'm mean, sorry, Mariners fans, but oh Jimmy, they don't Jesus add up. I like Ty France, dog. but they're I, I like him. He's I like a Frenchman. I like Ty France, but it's like your uh, recollection of what happened in the in the moment. You always kind of make yourself sound better. Like when Miles Straw said, "I was just telling him not to talk shit about my teammate," but really, Miles Straw said, "Hit me, motherfucker." And or recent, oh, yeah. recently, Rowan Wick said, "I said to all I said to Joey Votto was." You're going to bat flip a walk when he actually said, bat flip a walk, you motherfucker. So, like, you know, sometimes your recollection, but. You filter it for interviews. Ty France. Why would you call Joey Votto a motherfucker? Ty France. Maybe he did. He did call him that. Ty. What? I wasn't talking about. Oh, I see. Ty France. He said, all I said was uh, that hit me because I thought the umpire didn't call it. And the umpire said, I know I called hit by pitch. And then, he, and then he said, I said, you don't think that was on purpose, do you? And the umpire said, no, I don't think so. And I said, yeah, me neither. And the next thing I know, the Mariners are coming after me. That was his quote afterwards. And it's like, that's not how that combo went. There's just no way. You're giving the Mariners so much love. I am giving, I like the Mariners, but I'm just saying, I'm probably on Ty France's side too. I think they were yelling at service. I think they were, I think it was one. Those were two different nights though, what I'm talking about. No. One was. One was Presley getting injected. One was yeah. Neris getting injected. Yeah, but you're talking about the Neris one. Yeah. Presley got ejected because they said it was intentional and they that threw was, it twice. That was ridiculous, but that's because the umpire crew knew there's bad blood from the hit by pitch in the head up in Seattle. So they were like waiting. Vic is one of the good guys. I don't know what happened there. You anticipate that and then you, you run amok. I'll what, take, was your ti- what was your topic? I'll take some of the Mariners heat off you. Uh, services neck kind of weirds me out. Just the angle of it. I don't know. Um, He's got a crooked neck? It's not crooked. It's it's just, I always notice it. It's the only thing I see when I look at him. Interesting. Um, my topic, if you guys are Roman ready. Um, Roman, Trev, uh, <laughs> if you're having trouble in the bedroom uh, with erectile dysfunction... Erectile dysfunction is when it's just a, a picture of service when he was in his playing days as wearing the catcher's gear. And it looks like it looks like an 80s movie. It looks like an actor being in a movie playing a catcher. You don't see a lot of neck there. No, not not in this picture you at all. Josh Young. There was no, other. There was, it's not a thick neck. I think it's just a little you're, long. What you're what you're missing. Yeah. Is he has lower lip to chin is tight. OK. See this. That's a small lower lip to chin, which makes the neck look. Wider. Is it like the guy from Men in Black, the like the bad guy? It, uh, it's no, all contorted. It's just there's a lot of neck in the back. I think Jimmy's chin thing is true. There's just you do everywhere I see is neck. Oh, he played college ball in Creighton, where his coach was former Cubs general manager Jim Hendy, Hendry. Roman, uh, we're taking the stigma out of erectile dysfunction. There's no, no need. Big deal. We no have a deal. solution. This happens to 52% of guys age 40 to 70. Trev, Just how, yesterday you were saying it happened to you. Trev, how old were you saying Chris Rose is? Fuck, I don't know. A lot. It's a lot. Okay. Ish. Um, here's what you should do. If you or your loved one is struggling a little bit, why don't you reach out to Roman? They'll get you in touch with a medical, licensed medical professional. And if you're prescribed... You will get $15 off your first month of treatment with code TALKIN. That's GetRoman.com slash TALKIN today if you're prescribed $15 off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you have the confidence and control to be Roman ready. Don't go in a slump. Don't put yourself in a slump. Get Roman. Going up with some hot wood. And I can be your slump buster. If if we did find some tech that helped hitters out, right. do you think that they would use it or not use it's it because they were afraid point. of what what people would think? Steroids. They use those. They did. They did. They sure not did. me. Not Trev, cleanest guy in the game. Yep. 
Showered Thanks, regular. Still hit freaking tanks, too. Jake, are you going to have a topic? Yeah, yeah let's. Let, what is your lychee topic? Lychee Jake here <laughs> telling you about mm. kind of what Trev was talking about. We're a third of the way through the season, Trev. Did you know that? I did. Uh, 54 games on the nose for the Yankees and other teams right around there. A third of the season. And Trev, you mentioned slumping. You mentioned baseball being tough. There's also guys that are first half guys, second half guys, and it, we see it every year that there's dudes who have a, a horrible first half and then something clicks and they do it in the second half. I'm going to give you guys a list of names, if that's all right with you guys. Mm-hmm. Some guys that are on the struggle bus around MLB right now. Um, some big names, by the way. Big Fran Mil Reyes. A 533 OPS right now in 195 in 35 games. He's had some injury stuff. A couple of these guys Thanks have. for bringing it up. Javi Baez, 198, 234, 540. Look at that neck on Scott Service. What's that pose? <laughs> Excuse me. Tyler O'Neill, our thick king. He just returned from injury, but in his 32 games this year, 195, a 552 OPS. What do you think about calling him Ton? Like T O N, Ton? Yeah. yeah. Interested. Okay. Um, I think it sucks. Back. I think it's awful. He's 5'10 and back. Bobby Dahlbeck. Now remember this one. That little pissa. 50 games this year, 179, 265, 556. Jake, we get it. These guys are playing bad. Whit Merrifield. AJ Pollock, Trev. It's a rude segment. I don't know if that's good news for you. He's having a tough start. Max Muncy. Guys, a 591 OPS. Been one of the best players in baseball the past few years. Trev, it's baseball. Maybe it was actual baseballs a little bit. The pitchers. It's still early. It's a third of the season through. You can still have a good second third of the season. You could have a good half of the season. Um, Joey Gallo in Yankee land. Trev, so I wanted to go back because there were some guys last year that had horrible first halves. And they turned it around. So I want to give some hope. If you're a Tigers fan and you've seen Javi Baez and it's looked bad. And you gave him this big contract. Guess what? We got two-thirds of a season left. Javi can still go. All these guys can still go. And I want to give some examples from last year. Um, And I just told you guys, what name? Let's see if you guys were paying attention. Which name did I tell you guys to remember? The Little Pisser? BBD. Got it right. Bobby Dahlbeck. Jeez. Mm. But you said it in an accent, and I, yeah. I'm not good with the Boston accent. Bobby Dahlbeck. Back, back, back to. Last year, he had a seven, a 673 OPS in the first half. Not great. A little below league average. It's, it's whatever. Young Bobby Dahlbeck, that's fine. Bobby Dahlbeck's second half last year. 269, 344, a 955 OPS. Mm. So I remember when we were doing TPPs. This year, we were all kind of surprised by Bobby Dahlbeck's numbers. He had a big second half, and maybe Dal- Bobby Dahlbeck's just going to be a second half guy. Um, he could potentially be building up to that a little Teixeira. Um You can you can get a Daisy that way if you're good enough in the second half, right. but you can't get an MLB All Star uh, right vote, and that's that's a bummer. Potential reverse All Star Bobby Dahlbeck. Um, All-star voting's a fraud. 100%. That's why we have the all-JM team. Just run our, When we go to the all-star game, right. I just want to, if we, you know, red carpet it, and you say, you know, you're not done. Right. You're just getting started. This doesn't mean shit. Congrats, or we could on, say, a, actually, congrats on a good two months and a proud fan base. Yeah. And this guy won the Daisy and not you, actually, so... There was a guy last year we talked about a lot. We've talked a lot about this year. Um, his first half last year, he was 183, a 296 on base, a 626 OPS. Ick. But then Ian Happ. Woo. 
Ooh. went 268, 350, and 886 OPS to get himself a bottle of wine that he's still waiting for. Nine figures. Ion. We call him Ion for the other guy. Well, that's Ion Anderson. This is Ian Happ. I know. Ion. We haven't Ion. said Ion Anderson. Ion Op. Ion Op. No, that's, H is silent. That ain't working. It sucks. That ain't working. Uh, our guy Happer had an atrocious, atrocious start to last season. He turned it around big second half. And that could be your guy. That could be Lorenzo, Lorenzo Kane, who don't look at his stats, by the way. Ooh, we talked about Lorenzo on baseball today. It's uh, he's had some pretty interesting quotes about himself. Don't look at his stats. Jake, I want to dice this up. Just Jake reading off bad stats, all that. Frankie Lindor first half last year, six ninety eight OPS. Trav, you referenced that article. And he read and he read the article and he said, "Oh, I find comfort in this." Second half, off. he had an eight one three. Actually, OPS. all he had to do was beat up Jeff McNeil. Yeah, rat raccoon. Gosh, do you think we'll ever get to the bottom of that? I think we did, right? Someone said it in the offseason. They fought. Uh, Lindor punched McNeil. Okay. I think so. And then... Hearsay! Hearsay! I'm this is probably my favorite one from last year. There was a trade involved. Um, you oh, may yes. remember this. Big Jorge Soler. 186, 279, a 599 OPS. In the first half last year. In the second half, a little change of scenery. 263, 357, a 911 OPS. Now, tying it together with Trev's, I'm sure these guys have some stories and they'll tell you they looked back at some tape and they, you know, they they were working on their A swing. I think they started running into a couple baseballs and then the baseball gods took over from there. So Mine was kind of to be a PSA to baseball fans. Detroit, you cannot love what you've seen from Javi Baez so far. Uh, you just rolled out the bag and it hasn't been pretty. But guess what? There's still a lot of time left in this baseball season. And some of these guys, not all of them are going to turn it around. Max Muncy. Guy's a stud, man. AJ Pollock. Um, it's interesting you haven't talked about Jesse Winker turning it around at all. When he had a good first half last year and then had a better second half and will 100% turn it around. James, and it's I'm, just super interesting you didn't mention him. I'm glad you, you must brought Mariners. I'm glad I'm glad you brought it up. Mm. Cuz Jesse Winker is a goddamn stud. And right now his numbers are way below where Jesse Winker normally is. So yeah, him, AL West friend Marcus Simeon, uh Rangers fans can't be, you know, we got a couple people in new new places here. Joey Gallo, Winker, Simeon. Well, Simeon's not really. What? Winker, yes, changed leagues. A lot of new faces. Simeon went back to, he stayed in the AL and he went back to the West. Well, it's a new surroundings. It's a new clubhouse. It's a new team. It's a new oh, drive oh, to the oh, ballpark. Yeah, all, oh, that, yeah. all that stuff. I'm talking I'm, about pitchers. I'm talking like about all that. When Stan came to the Yankees, he was very vocal about how right. he keeps, do you know, that Stan keeps a notebook, Trev, like a journal of every after every game, and tracks how every pitcher pitches him, and then before games will like go to his own. That's kind of what you're talking about, but not for the the body, but like right like he he does it like after the game to get in the moment his thoughts, so he can like dive back into that headspace kind of versus that guy. And when he came to the Yankees and he went from NL East to AL, he was like, I got an empty notebook. I don't know any of these guys, and I rely heavily on that. A lot of guys, I've, I've known a lot of guys to have done that. Some guys bring it on the bench and do it like during the game. Um, I think most of the time you'll get the scouting reports. You'll make your own little notes on them. Uh, as you know, your, as your role changes, that changes. When you're a starter, you don't have to do that as much because you're, you're kind of getting enough reps where you see these guys. Uh, but when you're a bench player, I think that really helps a lot. When I went to the Phillies and I was coming off the bench, that was something that I wanted to do was – really go over the relievers like to a T like like study every single one from every organization because I didn't know any of them and if you could do anything to help you have that advantage I mean the Phillies are pretty good about platoon splitting and getting you in an advantageous situation but still 
just knowing what he goes to on a two, one count, if there's a glaring thing, 70%, he goes to this. You want to know that it's probably what he's writing down feelings too. I mean, yeah, it's all about just like trying to bottle shit up, please. Can we stop writing in notebooks mm. and doing silly stuff in the cage? We need some, like, we need some tech too. It's my, it's going to be, I am going to figure this out. I swear we're going to do it. And it might, it might be as simple as a better VR system. I don't know, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Do you remember, I mean, have you guys seen where they have the big screens and a little hole and they'll put the picture up Hated those. and, and they release and the ball comes out of it. I hated those. It's brutal. Yeah. I didn't like those either. Hated those. Doesn't those, work. Okay. Those should be. J- Jimmy, chime in when you're ready. Okay. Those baseball pitching machines, because think about what you know about me between baseball being a secret try hard in video games, those baseball pitching simulators with the hole in it and the arm comes through, those should be like my favorite activity in the world. And I hated those things. <laughs> They stunk. They make you feel horrible. Those were a nightmare. (laughs) Those were closer to nightmare than wet dream. A lot of people hate hitting off machines for that reason. Now they've figured out what the angels are doing. They're doing it with soft balls. Because if you just get your shit beat in, it's not like going to hurt you. You don't not want to swing again, you know? So maybe... Like these are the little things that hitters are having to do. We're having to hit with softballs, bro. Softballs. Like literal nerf balls. Wow. Something's gotta be better, man. We got we gotta figure it out. I'd like to chime in. Okay. Uh Logan Gilbert. Ooh. Righted the ship last two starts. ERA two two. It's got a look to him. I didn't realize how much of a look he had to him. Yeah. I mentioned Palanti, he looks like he went a, he looks like he went a summer without shade and light food. Hmm. He looks like Palanti. he he fought in high school people. Mm. Who? Logan Gilbert. All right. He's got a little Tyone meets glass now for me. Like if they had a baby. Mm, I don't see that. Hmm. I have like Chris Sale meets Sonny Gray. Should we do a whole up on that one day? Who looks like whose baby? Yeah. <laughs> Which two MLBers could have birthed this MLBer? Yeah. Do you guys know about Penn Murphy? Okay. <laughs> do you guys know about Penn Murphy? I do. We did, we did a, BBD and I did a Wake and Jake episode that are the best relievers in each bullpen you don't know, and Penn Murphy was on the list. Bandy boy, you should know him. I, I know him now. Palanti, I know you too, bro. <laughs> Just today. Shout out. What's your first name? Do we kick it to the Joe's call? Yeah, let's kick it to the Joe's call. Fuck slumps. Andre Palante. What's up? Hmm. You say that name again? Andre Palante. What? It rolls off really well. Penn Murphy. Yeah. Both names spelled interestingly. <laughs> His first name is, is William Murphy. I don't know if I've ever seen Murphy spelled like that. Yeah. It's super odd. Oh, he's a hitter too? Oh, for one with a strikeout last year. Hmm. It's a great app. Yeah. Goodbye. It'd be so bad. I'm so hungry all the time. <laughs> Fight on, baby. Mmm.
Hey, Joe's, we're we're doing talking baseball. How you doing? I'm doing well. You're good. Surprising. That's good to hear, man. That's really good to hear. I don't know why you're so surprised. Uh, everything is good. Everything has always been good. Thank God. That's uh. <laughs> Just wondering what's going on. Chris Rose is texting me, and also Peter Moylan texts me. <laughs> That's nice. It's probably good to get you know a pitcher's advice. I don't need it. I don't have to come to concert. <laughs> you guys know this, right? Take like, the full eighteen months, Joe, here, before you start pitching. Yeah. 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 Do you like? Do you like that people are reaching out to you at least? I, I appreciate people saying, you know, with the well, wait, but it's, it's, I don't need it. I, 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 I think I don't need it. I don't. Joe's, you need to post a picture of your elbows without scars to prove it. You need to post a picture, a healthy picture of two elbows? <laughs> <laughs> so you've been trying? <laughs> Can you try, you try it. All right. You try to take a picture of two elbows. All right. It looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you're you're this is do- something else. So you're okay. Yes, I'm okay. You shouldn't be surprised. I don't even know how this even started. I'm I'm as just confused as you, man. I'm trying to walk <laughs> us through. This. Wait, so did he have it or not have it? I st- I'm still not sure if he had it or not. I think he had the experimental yeah, one. Jane, what the fuck is going on right now? What's going on? We might have to cut this and put it at the end of the episode. This yeah, is maybe this is uh, extra credit for the. <laughs> Joe's that that spread like wildfire, dude. Chris Rose. Chris Rose, who's, I don't even think he's on the internet. <laughs> he texted me and said, <laughs> "What fish is, buddy, man?" <laughs> <laughs> Do you respond? I did. I said I did not have Tommy John today. <laughs> it's got to be a confu- that's a confusing conversation. Now that's an interesting one. C Rose is serious. On yeah, I don't know. Is he serious or joking? Do you think Chris Rose is in on the joke? I don't know. I I don't know. Because I've been joked too at this company. Okay, it's, it happens to the best of us. Peter Moylan, New York Porch Porch just tweeted it. I don't know what's going on. Oh no! Yo, this is crazy. Yeah, Joe's. It was kind. It was kind of a throwaway line from Jimmy. I should have just never said anything. I should have just said, okay, just let it rock. And I should have been quiet. This is what I'm paying for this. It's me. I mean, pretty good engagement, though, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah. What is that? Oh, no. Dan uh, Canobio is uh, tweeting. Oh, no. The boxing world is about to send their condolences, Joe. Yeah. So Canobio's in now. Canobio. Kevin tweeted. I just sent you a picture of my elbows. <laughs> People are tweeting pictures with me. People are tweeting pictures with you? Yeah, like pictures that I took with them. <laughs> <laughs> like you died. This is like, a, like your eulogy. Yeah, like, in memoriam. Right like they're putting me on a t-shirt. I don't. I don't know what. I don't know what should I say to you right now, Joe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. All I, I can. Like you are the responsible party. All I can do is wish you well. I should have never been wished because I don't like. Of course, you take well wishes, but I don't. I don't have Tommy John. I'm still confused. Because why would Chris Rose reach out? Because you guys confused him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Come on, All right. right. We gotta we gotta record talking baseball. But sorry, sorry for this mix up terrible. or surgery or whatever happened. There's no mix up. Everything's very clear. I cleared it up. I said, <laughs> Until you get that picture out, I don't think you're gonna clear anything up. Yeah. 
I don't know who made that picture anyway. With me with the helmet on the back. <laughs> I don't know who made that. You know that wasn't I me. Cut that Kyle immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, Joe. Hey, we'll talk to you in a little bit. All right. Good luck, man.